where the Norwegian banners flat the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, with terrible members, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cardor, began a dismal conflict that Bellona's bridegroom, lapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! That now, Sweno, the Norway's king, craves composition, nor will we design him a burial of his men till he dispersed at St. Colm's Inch ten thousand dollars to our general use. No more that Thane of Cardow shall deceive our bosom interest, who will pronounce his present death, and with his former title greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, no one Macbeth hath won. Go bid thy mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell, get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feelings as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heart-oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which I now draw. Thou marshalst me the way I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes have made fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dungeon gouts of blood. Which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now o'er the one half world nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtained sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel the wolf, whose howl is watched thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarquin's ravishing side towards his design moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth, hear not my steps which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present haw from the time which now suits with it. While I threat he lives, words to the heat of the deeds too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. Bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine, and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrust against my nearest of life, and though and though I could, with bare faced power, sweep him from my sight and bid my avouch it. Yet I must not, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall, whom I myself struck down, and thence it is that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from the common eye, for sundry weighty reasons. I shall, my lord, perform what you command me. Did I hear the galloping of horse? Who was it that came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word. Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my lord. Time now anticipates my dread exploits. The flighty purpose is never overtook, unless the deed go with it. From this moment the very first things of my heart shall be the first things of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cool.
What is thy name? Thou wilt be afraid to hear it. No, though thou callest thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name is Macbeth. The devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, nor more fearful. Thou liest, abhorred tyrant. With my sword I'll prove the lie thou speakest. Thou wast born of a woman. With swords I smile at weapons, laugh to scorn, brandished by a man that's of a woman born. 